Hello, it's Caitlin, and today we're going to make a toiletry bag from 1859. Alright, so the article I'm going to make today um, is the original one that I found was from Goody's Ladies Book. It's May 1859, I believe, and this is the picture of it. And they call it a toilet sachet. And basically it holds all sorts of useful articles. I figured as a living historian, um, I'm trying to get away from using a non-period um, containment bags, things to contain other things. Uh, so I don't have to worry about hiding things throughout the day if the room is being shown off or if I go to events where we are all in character. I want something that's period. And I figured this is a very useful article to hold all sorts of things I need for getting ready in the morning. Um, there's a couple of places I attend or used to attend that I like to get back to attending where the restrooms are all outside. They're modern, but they're outside and a bit away from the house. And so I'm um, having everything in one convenient location where I can go, this is my getting ready set. Okay, let's go brush my teeth, get my hair ready and that sort of thing. It's very useful and it's very period. So let me read you um, what Godis had to say about the subject. It said, this article, which is decidedly novel in its plan, will be found extremely useful to ladies when traveling as it is capable of containing every article required for the toilet in convenient, compact, and portable form. Well, very good things. The sachet contains upwards of a dozen compartments or pockets with the names of the articles for which they are destined marked upon them. The following enumeration of a few of these articles will afford an idea of the usefulness of the sachet. Soap, pins, toothbrush powder and brush, nail brush, hair pins, combs, hair brushes, ribbons, laces, etc. We have only to add that the sachet is made of brown holland and trimmed in na narrow silk, red silk braid. Each division or pocket is edged with this braid, and the name of the article is intended to contain is marked on it with letters of red silk. The whole, when tied out, tied when rolled up, is tied around by a red ribbon. So yes, there's a similar article described in 1853, Miss Leslie's of the Behavior Book. And so I shall read that. Um, it says, no lady should set out upon a journey unprovided with an oil silk bag for the reception of toothbrushes, soap, hairbrush, and towel. Let the bag be half, as quarter, half a quarter of a yard long. Why not just say eighth of a yard? <laughs> okay, half a quarter of a yard longer at, oh, longer at the back than at the front, so as to leave a flap to turn over and tie down when all the articles are in. It should be square, exclusive of the flap, um, and then about a quarter and half a quarter in length and the same in breadth, stitched in compartments, something like an old fashioned thread case, I suppose something like a housewife, only that the compartments differ much in size. The two smallest are for two toothbrushes, another should be broad enough to contain a hairbrush. For traveling, have a hairbrush with the mirror at the back, and if you get one that also has a dressing comb attached to it, so much the better. The largest compartment, which should occupy the center, is for the towel and a cake of soap. If you are obliged to start in haste, all these things can be put up while wet from recent use, the towel being rolled or folded into as small um, as possible. The oil silk will prevent the wet from oozing through. When all are in, turn over the flap at the top, which should be furnished with two long strings of broad white tape, and tie it securely down. Carry this bit this bag in the square satchel which now all ladies keep in their hands when traveling and which contains such things as they may want through the day, precluding the necessity of opening their large carpet bag till they stop for the night. So that one's larger and square, holds a towel. I don't think I would need that. I'm going to go with the one that has a picture because that's easier to make up. Um, so yes, I don't have any brown holland which is essentially my understanding. Um, lost the word for a moment polished cotton. Um, I don't have any currently, so I'm going to use regular cotton. This is a mostly a prototype. I'm going to make it up, see how it works. And if I decide later down the road I would like it um, to be made a little bit better, I will be using the period correct option of polished cotton. Um, this is something I would like to wash though, and I've noticed that modern polished cotton, the, the polish tends to rub off until you end up getting basically brown cotton. So as it's slightly pro cost prohibitive as well, I think this will work quite nicely and still give me the um, result that I want. So I went ahead and printed a larger picture of it and did some math. 
So I decided that I wanted it to be equal, all these compartments to be equal, so that it would roll easily and not be, um, you know, bothered by anything. Um, if these were all different sizes, it would kind of be hard to roll up nicely. So I decided I want the one with brushes to be five inches, and then the next two to be three and two inches, which will make five inches, two and three, which will make five inches, and three and two, which will make five inches. So this hole is 20 inches, and I think I cut the whole thing 23. I've already cut this. I, late last night at like midnight, I decided I had sudden inspiration and decided to work on this, and so I cut everything out. And the lighting in here is terrible at night, so I couldn't film. Um, but essentially, yeah, I cut it 23 inches, and I already went ahead and cut the flap, so I cut, or the pockets. So I cut the pockets, um, how do I describe this? I cut the pockets twice as long plus a little bit as, um, as the measurement I wanted them so that I can uh, use a folded edge to be the bottom side of the pocket. Um, that way there's no raw edges anywhere. I don't have to hem anything. So everything will be doubled over and which make it a little bit stronger as well. And then the raw edge I will encase. Um, I'm not going to use braid. I'm going to use a silk ribbon. So I'm going to encase it with the silk ribbon. And I am using the brown and red like the original, which I think will be quite pretty. So, um, yes, the long brown strip with the um, triangle on the top. So yeah, basically, I made it 11 inches wide because I measured my um, period style hairbrush and it was 9 inches. And I know with how tall it is, it's going to take up a little bit more space. And so I ended up making the whole, the whole 11 inches. And plus, um, with the soap, pins, and uh, tooth powder, I knew those were going to be divided into three. I need to measure the um, how, how wide my pomade and my toothbrush powder, or tooth, yeah, tooth powder, uh, uh, jars were to see and make sure they were fit. And I came up with 11 inches. So it is 11 inches wide and 23 inches tall, and the last three inches are at the flap, basically, if that made any sense whatsoever. And then I've cut many brown compartments. Um, I couldn't really get any red silk braid on short notice, so what I did is I ordered about 25 yards of white silk ribbon from Dharma Trading, and I'm going to dye it myself. So, I bought their cayenne red. It seemed like, because one of their other red options was um, fire truck red. I thought that'd be a bit too bright for the brown. So I'm hoping this will be more of an earthy red. Um, I think it will look very nice with the brown uh, fabric. So yes, I do believe my next step is to dye all this ribbon so that I can start sewing things. Okay, so I've already dyed the silk, or I just dyed the silk, and it turned out to be a very beautiful red color. Um, it's not too bright. It's almost like a ruby red, very deep um, jewel tone. I think it sets off the brown quite nicely. So yes, I'm glad that is done. Um, I'm about to run out of light here, and I know the um, lighting in the video gets really weird when I film at night because it likes natural light. So what I may do tonight is just take the pockets and put the raw edges, or encase the raw edges with the braid. Um, and I think that's all I shall do tonight, and I shall see you tomorrow after that is done to put this thing together, and it should be a very quick, easy project. I don't take, envision this taking very long, unless I come across any problems. So, yes, I will shall do that, and I will see you tomorrow. The color's probably going to pour it on this, because this is after dark, and, um, yeah, I just couldn't wait. So, yeah, the color's awful. Um, what I ended up doing, because I had you know, everything cut out. Like this was a pocket, 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 this was in this and this. So what I decided though, because these three have openings here, they don't need to be a pocket. Um, it's basically what I'm seeing. So this is a pocket. So basically from here all the way up, I made one piece and I'm just going to stitch it down with some ribbon to make the um, sections but they're not going to be opening that way. So I think what I'm going to do now is this is the large piece I had to um, 
make. And I kind of marked where I think I want everything. So this is going to be, um, I suppose I can mark them on, this will be three parts. And then this one is where, it says hairbrush and hairpins. Hairbrush isn't going to fit in here. Um, but hairpins will probably fit there and I'll find something else to go here. Toothbrush goes here. And this one is combs. I thought that would be a good spot for them. So what I think I'm going to do is, I have those marked. I'm going to slit these, sew the ribbon around them, and probably get on with the embroidery part. Um, and then I'll probably be time for bed by then. Um, if not, I'll work on something else. That's probably what I'm going to get done tonight. So yeah, that is the next step. Good morning, um, it is the next day. Clearly I didn't do any embroidery last night. What I did instead is stitch the pockets on. Um, so whenever I cut this, this is one piece, so it's a double layer of fabric is the pocket. Um, and I encased the raw edges here. Um, but the folded edge, I added when I cut it out an extra inch, so when folded it would be an extra half inch for seam allowance, because I don't want the pocket to end where you can see it. I want it to end a little extended downwards. And so I did two rows of stitching. I did one on the very, very edge, and I did one about half an inch up, um, a little less than half an inch, because I didn't want you to see it um, from there. Um, so yeah, um, I am terrible at encasing um, fabric in ribbon, apparently, but it doesn't look, well, it does look bad. But in theory, no one's going to see this but me. And I guess whoever's watching this video. But yeah, uh, so I think the next step is to figure out where I want everything and then um, start embroidering. So the embroidery is all done now. Um, it did take me most of the day. I think I started at like nine in the morning and it's like five now. So it did take me most of the day, but to be fair, I had a couple of video conferences throughout that time and other work-related business to attend to, grades being due and such. So I wasn't working on the entire day, and I did have to eat and cook during, you know, sometime during that day. Um, I started doing the cross stitch like the pattern shows on this one, but the way they did it, they had the C, M, and B made out of larger cross stitches, and the O and the S as tiny little cross stitches, which looked fine on the drawing. It did not look very good made up um, in real life. So I did a couple of them like that, decided I didn't like it, um, ripped them all out or cut them all out and then did a stem stitch instead. So I did redo a few of them as well. And then figuring like how to, I ended up just using just a regular pen and marking them in my own handwriting and then just sewing over that and it seems to work pretty well. So I have one for brushes, uh, combs, toothbrush, two types of hairpins, so my normal hairpins. And I have some that are faux tortoiseshell that are um, decorative. So I had a special place for them. Um, lip balm, soap, uh, toothbrush powder, or tooth powder, uh, pomade for your hair, and I also made a mending one. I thought that was very important um, because I am often in need of things like, you know, just a little bit of needle thread, maybe something um, is coming undone a bit, or pins. I need a lot of pins. Um, also, like, petticoat buttons will sometimes, they get worn, and so the buttons will pop off, and so... I thought having a mint a spot for a little sewing kit would be extremely useful. Usually my sewing, if I'm at an event, is not wherever I'm sleeping. Um, and usually where I'm getting dressed is where I'm sleeping. So I'd have my stuff like my brushes and my combs and all that with me, but my mending may be in the parlor downstairs or if it's the first night I've, I've gotten there, it may even be in the car still. Um, and I'm not one to um, grace the general public with the spectacle of me going downstairs in, um, you know, a complete state of undress in my undergarments. So, yes, I thought a mending uh, pocket would be very useful. And the last two I left blank, um, just so they can hold whatever I need for a particular event, whether it's um, an extra tucker for an evening gown, or hair ribbons, or maybe flowers for my hair from doing an event, an evening event. Um, so I left them blank so they didn't have a certain, a particular thing that was supposed to go in them. They could be whatever I needed them to be for that event. But yes, so the next step for me, I do believe, is, um, actually one more thing before I uh, stop that. One thing I would do if I was doing this again, 
is you know how I had it had the pockets doubled I would have done this last because you can see my stitching on the back and because it's doubled it would have been very easy just to do the embroidery then fold it and then all that um, under stitching wouldn't be seen but I mean this is the toiletry bag I'm gonna see it whoever I'm sharing a room with is gonna see it but seriously is anyone really gonna be looking underneath all these and flipping through all my pockets and going hmm what's your stitching look like I doubt that but if I were to do it again that's probably how I would do it um, but yes so my next step is to stitch down all these channels um, in various places put the ribbon on them and then yes we'll be almost done after that I think it's just encasing the um, edges and doing the ties at the very top um, but yes so that is my next step and I will see you after that is done all right so that is done um, I'm actually really liking how it's looking I really do like the brown and the red I think it looks really nice together um, um, I don't think I mentioned before, but I did buy a one inch ribbon from Dharma. I think it was 25 yards. It was just as expensive as the half inch I originally thought, but the half inch, um, had basically the same amount of, um, ribbon on the roll. So I didn't feel like I was getting a good value for that, so I went ahead and went with the inch. Um, which I think worked out pretty well. So I used it, folded over for this part, so it's half an inch here, and I folded over twice to get the quarter inch parts. I think I'm just going to fold it over once for the edges. So, yeah. All that is put together. And so, yes, I think I shall start binding these edges. So, that got done. Um, one thing I did end up doing is, I noticed on the back, because I have been stitching all this part down, there's some pretty nasty looking stitches on the back, so I made another long piece out of the same fabric just to kind of neaten it up so it doesn't look bad because um, I know I'm going to fold this up and I don't want weird nasty looking stitches all over the place so went ahead and did that I don't know if that was part of the original directions because you know we didn't get very good directions it wasn't didn't even have um, dimensions it was just here make this up to your picture so I made that executive decision don't know if it's right but I did and so now the only thing I have left to do is put on the ties. So I went ahead and folded this up real quick um, just to kind of mark where it ends. So I know I need to tie here and I also will need to tie here so that's why I marked that. So yeah, now it's only left, the only thing left is to cut the ties. Not sure how long I want them because um, I do want a decent bow and it doesn't say. So I'm wondering, I might try what 25 inches on each side looks like and see and go from there, maybe 15. I'll look at it and come back to y'all. Alrighty, it is complete. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to move this bottom part of the bow when I get it filled. That's going to have to be something I'll have to check out. I cut these 20 inches and I think they probably could have been 15. It's quite a large bow. But I really don't feel like cutting it. So it's going to stay like it is for now. I think because it's almost 11 o'clock at night, I think I'm going to go to bed. And tomorrow we shall fill it and see how it works filled. Alright, so let's fill the toiletry bag. So it has been a couple of days since we last spoke. Um, I finished the toiletry bag, um, was this Saturday? Um, so I finished it Thursday. But then I had to spend all of yesterday, Friday, um, gathering everything and making sure I had everything put together and that sort of thing. And then I spent today, or most of today, um, making the cute little uh, needle, uh, needle book that's going to um, go into the mending pocket a video on this to come. And so yes, let's go ahead and fill this. So I have my brushes, combs, toothbrush, hairpins, needle book. I have my pomade, um, cake of soap wrapped up in a cloth, a waxed cloth. Um, I have why are you fighting with your sister? That's not kind. Ilara. Um, I have some um, lip salve or um, lip balm and some tooth powder, which right now is just um, baking soda because it looks nice and I will figure out what I'm going to do with that later. 
And so without further ado, let's go ahead and roll this out of the way. So yeah, let's go ahead and put the brush in there. Combs. Okay. Probably could have made that opening just a slab to the top to the side, but that's okay. Toothbrush. I have to figure out some sort of cover for that. Um, hairpins. So I have two types of hairpins. Again, I have my ones that are shell and my ones that are normal. So these are my normal hairpins. I'm going to wrap that there. Stick that in there. There are the shell pins. Oops, that one got caught on the ribbon. I have, let's see, lip salve, my soap, which I actually made, and I just wrapped it up in a cloth, so there's that. And that'll hopefully keep it from leaking everywhere. So it's going to stick in there. Um, tooth powder, pomade, and the mending book. Um, I'm going to add, I have on order, you can't see that, I have on order some horn um, thread winders, and it's like a four-pointed one, so I'm going to uh, put some white, black, gray, and brown threads on there, so I can have a little bit of that, and that'll be stuck in the needle book when we get to that. But let's go ahead and see how this folds. going to be a little bulky. Let's see if, because that's there, if I make the, that point of the brush go that way. That part folds very nicely. So the rest of this. Okay. Yeah, and that's basically where I thought it was going to fold. I guess y'all can't see that. I apologize. But yes. So there's my toiletry bag. I think it turned out cute. Um, yeah, and it's certainly not as flat and you know useful as it was before I filled it, but I suppose that's kind of the point. It's not useful if you haven't filled it. Um, but yes, I think I'm going to make a traveling reticule out of silk, and it says that to ha it's supposed to house things like your uh, mirror and your um, brush and that sort of thing. So I think this is going to fit in one of those pockets and I'll have all of my hair stuff, hair nets, mirror, all of that's going to be in it. And so I think that is my next project to start. But yes, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully um, you found it interesting and learned a little bit of history and enjoyed watching the process of making a um, toiletry bag. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day.